Hello, welcome to today's class. So another topic in decision making is limiting factor analysis and uh, preparation and formulation of optimal production plan. So what it is, let's get started. So what is a limiting factor? As you can see, limiting factor, limiting as, as it is self-explanatory, a limiting factor is a factor that limits organizations activities a factor that limits organizations activities and for example in a manufacturing organization how my activities can be limited maybe i won't be able to produce uh, up to my sales demand that's how my activities can be limited so what could be the reason that why i'm not able to uh, meet the entire, uh, I, I'm actually able to uh, fulfill the entire uh, sales demand of products that maybe I have limited resources, yeah, due to limited resources. I may have shortage of materials, I may have limited pages available, right? I um, like shortage of finance, yeah, I may have shortage of labor hours. Labor hours or i may have limited machine hours yeah my machine capacity is limited and at times i may have insufficient sales demand yeah i may have limitation on my sales demand that i'm not able to produce more than that because the demand is limited maybe the government has imposed some restrictions and i cannot sell uh, more than certain limits so there could be limitations on the sales demand as well so considering all these problems i have here since i have limited resources so how i being a manager how i can how i can uh, increase my uh, company's profit increase company's profit in the in these limited resource like the question is how to efficiently efficiently now since the resources are limited so how to efficiently utilize my existing resource resources is a question is a question because I want to exploit my resources. I want to use my resources in the best possible way. Okay. And I also know, I also know, I want to produce those products which are more profitable. Yeah, definitely. I want to produce those products first. Which are profitable. That's how I can increase my profit rather than starting blindly and starting to, start, starting to produce the products which are least profitable, definitely you won't end up increasing company's profit. So I want to produce the products first, which are more profitable. That's, that's, why, that's how I want to just exploit my existing resources to maximize my profit. So, Profitable product is a product which is which generates more contribution. Definitely, a profitable product is a product that generates more contribution. That's how a product giving more contribution or is a profitable product. For example, material are is uh, there's shortage of material. Okay, only one. This is a case of a single limiting factor. Single limiting factor analysis. So at a time, it can be like that. There's material shortage as well as labor shortage. Only one would be short. Uh, at, at the same time, uh, both cannot be short and the three uh, shortages cannot be there. Three limitations or three limiting factor can be there. 
company would only be facing single limiting. Since it is single limiting factor analysis, so company would only be facing single limiting factor. So a product, a profitable product is a product that generates more contribution in one unit of a limiting in one unit of a limiting factor. For example, if I say that uh, uh, material, there's a shortage of material. So there are two products, X and Y. So X generates a contribution of five per kg, eh? and Y generates a contribution of 10 per kg. So clearly more profitable product is Y, and I would meet the entire sales demand. I would just prioritize production of product Y rather than X, because that's how that's uh, it, it, it generates more contribution per unit of limiting factor. Clearly, it is a more profitable product. Okay, so that's that's how I need to carefully use my uh, limited resource. And then I need to finally decide about the optimal production plan. Like, what is the optimal production plan? Optimal production plan is that like, how many units optimal production plan is how many units you need to produce for each product to maximize your profit optimal production plan is how many units to produce in a question it can ask you to identify what to identify what is the limiting factor Okay. It can also ask you like which is more profitable or least profitable product and least profitable product. And then you're going to rank it accordingly. Like, so I'm going to produce this one because this is ranking number one since it gives more contribution per unit of limited factor. And that's how I, I rank this on the second priority because this is least profitable and this is more profitable. It can ask you about which is more profitable and least profitable product. And thirdly, you, it can ask you about the optimal or the feasible production plan. Like how many units, how many units to produce for each, each product, which will maximize the contribution and definitely it will maximize the company's profit as well. So it can ask you about the optimal production plan. Okay, so we'll go one by one. Like number one step is how to identify a limiting factor. Limited, limited resource would be I'll take difference between the required resource minus the available resource. Okay, have a look at this question here. X limited makes two products, X and Y. Okay, one unit of product X requires five kg of material and two hours of labor. So you are given the kg per unit and as well as the hour per unit for X. Kg per unit, one unit of X takes around five kgs in two hours. And one unit of product Y requires four kg of the same material and three hours of the same labor. So actually from the same amount of labor hours and uh, uh, kgs available, you have to produce both X and Y. Now there's a competition, okay? Uh, now there's a competition and there might be some limiting factor as well. That's what we need to identify whether material is a limiting factor or labor is a limiting factor. Let's see. If there, there'll be shortage, that'll be limiting factor. If the resource would be excess, it won't be a limiting factor, obviously. There are only 2,000, okay, four kg of same material. One unit of Y takes around four kgs on one unit and three hours. Okay. 
And then I need to look at how many units of X and Y I need to produce. It means what is the sales demand? So sales demand, it tells that I have to produce 300 units of product X, 450 units of product Y, 450 units of product Y. The next thing that will be given to me in order to identify our limiting factor is available kgs okay and available labor hours available resource yeah available resource available labor hours so available kgs there are only 2000 labor hours available and maximum amount of material available each week is 3000 kgs so this is 3000 and this is 2000 maximum available hour labor hours are 2000 okay Number one thing is I need to identify the formula is this. Okay. First of all, I need to identify whether material is a limiting factor or not. So the formula is required material, less available material. The answer could be a shortfall. In case it's a shortfall, then it would be a limiting factor. Mm -hmm. Or the answer could be access when it is uh, an abundance and the access when it's not a limiting factor. Okay, required material. Okay, one unit of X requires five kgs, right? And if we need to produce 300 units, which is actually the, the sales demand, so what is the total material required for X and then for Y as well? If one unit of Y takes around four kgs and we need to produce 450 units of Y. And then when you sum both, you're actually going to get the total required material to produce 300 units of X and 450 units of Y. Let me open up the calculator now. So five into 300, actually 1500 kgs is required for X and now for Y. If one unit takes around four, so 450 units actually required 1800. And altogether, I should have how many kgs of material in order to produce 300 units of X and 450 units of Y is actually 3300 kgs. So required material is 3300 kgs. And what is the available material? Available is only 3000, so clearly there is 300 <clears throat> there's a shortfall. There's a shortfall. 300. Shortfall of kgs is 300. Okay. I need to have 300 more material in order to produce 300 units of X and 450 units of Y. So clearly, material is a limiting factor here. Let's identify if labor is a limiting factor or not. Let's identify for it for material. Let's identify for labor if it's a limiting factor or not. Now about labor. Required labor hours. I have the labor hour per unit and I have the uh, sales demand as well. So resource per unit into sales demand. That's the formula, right? Into sales demand. That's the formula for required material, right? But I will use what is available to me. So I cannot produce all of the units provided I have shortfall of material by 300. So required labor hours, less available labor hours. Okay, required labor hour both for X and Y. If one unit of X takes around two and uh, I need to produce 300 units for X and if one unit of Y takes around three hours, labor hours, and I need to produce 450 units for Y. So combined, I need to have two into 300. I actually need to have 600 kgs for X and three into 450, 13, 
50, 13, 50 hours for Y and combined I need to have 19, 50 hours. And now I have labor hours. I have 2000 labor hours, okay? So now there's no shortfall, there's excess labor hours. So clearly labor is not a limiting factor. I, I won't be able to, do I have enough uh, labor hours? I have uh, 50 labor hours in excess, but still I won't be able to produce it because I have, I won't be able to produce three, the entire sales demand of 300 units and 450 units. Why? Because I have shortfall of uh, material. Now, now the question is, now the question is, how are you uh, going to, how many units you need to pr produce uh, for each one of these uh, uh, for X and Y? For that, I need to follow a set of steps until I get to the my final answer that which is the most profitable or which is the least profitable product. Definitely, I would want to produce units for the product which is more profitable. So how to do that? How to do that? Okay. So the question was this, okay. Let me see another question here. Okay, here's the question, here's the question. We need to identify the scarce resource and we need to advise that limited how many units of each product it should make. And for that, we need to rank the products. We need to identify the most profitable and least profitable product. So what are, what, are, what are the steps here? Let me show you. Okay, number one step, how to prepare an optimal reduction plan in case of single limiting factor in your decision problem based upon marginal costing. So I will, first of all, identify my limiting factor by required resource less available resource. Then I will calculate the contribution per unit, which is selling price per unit minus variable cost. Once I have the contribution per unit, then I need to identify my limiting factor per unit. On step number one, I would have identified the limiting factor, whether it's material or let's labor or machine hours. Then I need to identify my limiting factor per unit of product. Okay. And then and then I need to calculate contribution per unit of limiting factor by dividing contribution per unit with the limiting factor per unit that you have identified. And then I will do the ranking. Then uh, the most profitable product would be ranked one and according to that. And then finally, I'll be preparing the optimal production plan that will ensure that will maximize company's profit provided fixed cost remains constant in the short term. So these are certain assumptions based upon marginal costing. We assume that fixed cost remains constant and we assume that selling price is also constant and we assume that variable cost is also constant and then we come up to decide something that how many units we need to produce if we want to, if despite the limiting factor, we want to maximize our profit. So the question is this, we're going to do this question. So company is selling two products, A and B. A and B, okay, and we are given the labor hour per unit and material kg per unit. Kg per unit. So the question has already given us the limiting factor per unit, and one of these could be the limiting factor per unit. So kg per unit is this is five kgs and two kgs, and uh, labor hour per unit. Labor hour per unit is also given two and four. Two hours and four hours, okay? And what else I need? I need my sales demand, I told you. And then I need my available resources. Sales demand 500. I need to produce 500 units of A and 250 units of B. Selling price per unit is also given to me because I need to calculate the contribution as well once I identify my limiting factor, right? 
So selling price per unit is also given to me. 30 and 36, 30 and 36. During each week, the maximum number of labor hours available is 1800. Okay, I will write here, maximum labor hours is equal to 2000. 1800 and the con maximum quantity available is 3000 units. So, 1800 and maximum kg is available, material kg is available is 3000. Okay. And what else is given to me? The labor rate is 5 per hour and material cost is 2 per kg. So I need to calculate my contribution. So I need to deduct the material cost per unit. And I also need to deduct my variable cost. Another variable cost here is labor cost per unit. Once I deduct both, then I will be able to calculate my <coughs> contribution per unit. But on first step, this is step number two. Step number two is to calculate contribution per unit. First of all, I need to identify whether the material is a limiting factor or labor is a limiting factor. Okay. So step number one, identify the limiting factor. So here I'll do the working for material, and here I'll be doing the working for labor. I need to calculate the required material. Okay. So if uh, I need to produce 500 units of A and uh, one unit of A takes around five kgs and two into 250, I need to produce 250 units of B and one unit of B takes around two kgs. So required material is five into 500 plus two into 250. So the required material is 3000 kgs. The maximum available material is, so I, I don't have shortage of material. Uh, available material is also 3000 required also 3000 so there is neither shortfall or nor excess so clearly material is not a limiting factor what about labor i can do the same working here for labor required resource less available resource required hours which will meet the sales demand less available hours available Hours. Available hours are 1800 and required. I can calculate one unit of A takes around two. And if I need to produce 500 units, so I need 1000 hours for A and two into 250. How many hours I need for B? So two, two into 500 plus two into, sorry, not two, not two here, four, four. Four hours, it takes around four hours. Mm -hmm. okay. Two into 500, four into 250, four into 250. Two into five hundred plus four into two fifty. So I actually require two thousand labor hours, but I only have eighteen hundred. So definitely, clearly, I have this shortfall of labor hours. So labor is a limiting factor. Okay. So I have identified my limiting factor. So clearly I know my limiting factor per unit is basically this, 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 this is my limiting factor per unit. Okay. So labor is a limiting factor. Labor is a 
limiting factor. Now I need contribution per unit. Step number two. Now I need contribution per unit. I have that information given so that I can calculate the material cost per unit. Okay. What information is given to me? Okay, that's the information given to me. The labor rate is 5 per hour and material cost is 2 per kg. Material cost is 2 per kg. Okay. So one unit takes around 5 kgs and the rate per kg is 2. So 5 into 2, 10. Material cost per unit for X, so for A is 10, for A is 10, okay? And labor cost per unit. One unit takes around two hours and rate per hour is 8 per hour is 5. 5 into 2, again it is 10. Labor cost per unit for A is 10. So 30 minus 20, what is contribution per unit? T minus 20 is the variable cost. So contribution per unit of A is 10. What about B now? What about B now? Okay. So for B, I know it takes around how many? 2 kgs? 2 into 2. So material cost per unit is 4 and labor cost per unit. It takes around 4 hours. 4 hours and labor rate was... 5, 4 into 5, 5 4s are 20. So this is, this is the selling price. Selling price less material cost per unit 4, less labor cost is 20. So I have successfully calculated the contribution per unit. Okay. So I have calculated the contribution per unit. So number one step was to identify the limiting factor. Step number two was contribution per unit. Step number three was identify limiting factor per unit that we have already identified is for A and B. It is two hours for A and four hours for B. Once you have the contribution per unit and you have the limiting factor per unit, now I need to rank the product. I need to identify the most profitable and the least profitable product so that I produce more of a more profitable product in order to maximize company's profit. So I need to <coughs> calculate contribution. Now, what I know is this is the contribution is the contribution okay this is the contribution in two hours and this is the contribution in four hours okay so how I can uh, I uh, how I know that which uh, product uh, gives more contribution in one uh, uh, against one hour of limiting factor, one labor hour of limiting factor. So I need to have some common basis for that. I need to have some common basis for that. So how I'm going to do that? I need to divide, calculate contribution per unit of limiting factor. Contribution per unit of limiting factor, okay? Both for A. And B. So what I need to do is I need to divide the contribution per unit with labor hour per unit, which is labor hour per unit, which is the limiting factor per unit that I have identified. So that will give me the contribution per labor hour of limiting factor. So that I know whichever product will generate more contribution on one against one labor hour, which is one unit of a limiting factor 
is would be a more profitable product, definitely. This doesn't give you any idea about which is more profitable product since this gives a contribution of 10 against two hours and this gives a contribution of 12 against four hours. So I need one common basis, which is going to be one labor hour, right? One unit of labor factor, one kg if material was a limiting factor, okay? So I need to divide the contribution with the limiting factor per unit too. And here the contribution with its own limiting factor per unit that I have identified in step number three here. Now I can get an idea, 10 divided by two, this clearly gives a contribution of five per labor hour. And this gives a contribution of 12 divided by four. This gives a contribution of three per labor Hour. Now I know which is a more profitable product. So more profitable product is the one which generates more contribution per unit of limiting factor. And then I need to rank according to that. Now I know that A is more profitable product as compared to B. Based upon this, these figures are, it gives a contribution of five again per labor hour, but this gives only contribution of three per labor hour. So definitely how I can utilize my existing resource to maximize the profit if I would start, if I uh, started blindly and I started producing B first, definitely I won't end up making more profit because it doesn't, it is not a profitable product. So that's why the question arises that before starting to produce the product, you need to identify first that which is more profitable product, which is least profitable product, because I need to reduce my cost anyways. I need to maximize my profit. That is. Uh, gonna make my company more successful. And that's how I, despite the limiting factor, I can take the best decision out of this scenario. That's why now I'm going to rank the product and this is going to be one, and this is going to be two. And the last question arises, what is the optimal production plan? Means how many units you need to produce for A and B that would maximize the profit and that is an optimum solution for your most feasible solution, what you call it. So now in the final process, I need to prepare the optimal production plan or, or optimal pro product mix, you can also call it. So I would start from the available resource. Available resources only available labor hours. Available labor hours are only 1800, right? Okay. And now I would start producing product A first. And I need to know their, know their sales demand. I already have 500 and 250 units. 500 units. I need to know the sales demand as well. 500 units, for this and 250 units for B. Okay, available hours is 1800. Okay, first of all, I will produce A since it is more profitable to produce A, and this is least profitable. So first of all, hours consumed by A. If I know that one unit of A takes around two hours, and what is its sales demand? Sales demand is 500, so 1,000, straight away 1,000, hours would be consumed by, out of 1,800, 1,000 hours would be consumed by A. And the remaining would be for B, definitely remaining hours for, left for B would only be 800, okay? However, in order to produce the entire sales demand, 250, one unit takes around four hours, I was supposed to have 1,000 hours. That's when I only have 800. That's how I calculated. I, I won't be able to meet the entire sales demand, the entire 250 units, okay? I will produce 500 units of pay, but definitely not 250 units for B. Yeah, because for that, I should have 1,000 hours, but I only have 800 left for that. And that is what the short form is all about here, okay? So, and how many units I can, if I know how many units I can 
produce when i know that one unit of b takes around takes about 4 hours okay so how many units would be produced in 800 hours 4x equals 800 where x equals we simply need to divide the remaining hours available for b with the limiting uh, factor per hour or with the labor hour per unit and you would get the how many units you could produce 800 divided by 4 means 200 units instead of 250 i would only be able to produce 200 units so what is the optimal production plan a and b so cl clearly you can see that since it was more profitable product so i utilize uh, I try to make the entire sales demand of A in order to maximize that was the best utilization of the resource. Instead of starting with B and then having not being able to meet the entire sales demand of A wouldn't have been a win-win situation. It wouldn't have been a very wise decision, definitely. And so I started with A first. It was ranked first and this was ranked two. So we were only left with 800 rather than 1000. That's why we were not able to produce 250 units rather. We were left with only 800 and one unit takes four hours. So definitely how many units could be produced in 800 hours is 200. So this is your optimal production plan, 500 and 200. So, so advise how many units of each product you would make. So the answer is 500 of this and 200 of this. And okay, so these are all the steps we followed as well. Identified the scarce resource. So labor was a limiting factor. Then we calculated contribution per unit. Step number two, this was step number one. And uh, the, then we identified the uh, limiting factor per unit. And then we calculated contribution per labor hour or contribution per unit of limiting factor. It was given five, it was given three, and then we ranked. And then finally, starting from uh, the available resource, we came up to the final plan that we're producing 500 units of product A and 200 units of product B. Now, finally, I can calculate the total contribution, total contribution, okay? When I know that contribution per unit of A is N, and for B is 12. And now when I am producing, it can ask you about the total contribution. And even it can ask you about the total profit as well. Though I'm not given the fixed cost data here. Otherwise, I would have calculated total profit as well. From total contribution, I would have deducted the fixed cost and got my profit. But here, I can calculate the total contribution companies earning by producing 500 units into 10 plus 200 units of B when one unit gives a contribution of 12. So 500 into 10, contribution from A is 5,000 and for B is 2,200 into 12, 200 into 12, 2400. Since we produce, though contribution per unit for B is more, but we don't take decision based upon contribution per unit because we take decision based upon contribution per unit of limiting factor or contribution per labor hour. In this case. So contribution per labor hour of A was more, it was five and it was only three. So we produced the entire sales amount of A first and it gave more contribution as compared to B and the total contribution earned by the company was 7,400. So it was the wisest decision. Okay, so that's how we do the question. Now we're gonna do some more questions. So here's, here's another activity. Okay, the three products here, all three products use the same type of labor, which is limited to 1,500 hours per month. So actually in this case, they have already identified the limiting factor. We don't need to do that, right? We don't need to do that and uh, Labor hours are limited to 1500. I can just do the quick confirmation as well. Like uh, I am given the demand, I have the labor hour per unit. Simply multiply this into this plus this into this plus this into this. This will give you the required hours. Though I don't, I'm not required to do it. If 
question already explains you that labor is a limiting factor. I don't need to do the step number one that to identify the limiting factor. Like, like I can prove it to you here 5 into 100 plus 6 into 200 plus 4. Is it 400? Yeah. 400 into 8. So I was supposed to have 4,900 labor hours. So definitely it's a limiting factor, 4,900 labor hours. But I only have 1,500. Okay, and clearly there's a shortfall, a lot of shortfall of 3,400. So I won't be able to produce the entire sales demand definitely. And I need to identify the quantities of each product it should be. Contribution per unit is already given. Limiting factor per unit is already given. Now we can calculate contribution per hour simply and then do the ranking. So here it is 25. Twenty-five divided by five, forty divided by six, and thirty-five divided by eight. 25 divided by 5 is 5. This gives a contribution of 5 per labor hour. 40 divided by 6. This gives a contribution of 6.67 per labor hour. More than that. And let's see the third one. 55 divided by 8. This gives a contribution of 4.375. Now, how I do the ranking? This is to be ranked 1, 2, and then 3. Okay. Available resource, available, starting from available resource, available hours are 1500. Now, first hours consumed by B, because I will prepare B first. Okay. And one unit of B, 6 into 200 will consume how many hours? It takes six hours of labor and uh, I need to produce 200 units for that. So it will clearly take the most of the labor hours. And then in second priority, I will produce eight hours remaining for A is 12, 30, 30, 30, 300, okay? And in 300 hours, how many units I can produce? 300 divided by 5. How many units I can produce? 300 divided by 5. I can only produce 60 units. And I won't be able to produce any since C was the least profitable product, ranked third. I am not producing any of the product for C. Zero units for C. I produce the entire sales demand for B. Right, that's what I started with first, and I was only able to produce 300 divided by 60 units for A because I was only left with 300 hours. And in those 300 hours, one unit of A takes around five hours. So, how many units could be produced in 300 remaining hours? That's how I've done simply divide 300 by. Five and you will get uh, you producing 60 units for A and 200 units for B and none for C. That is your optimum production plan. Here's another question. We have three products, one, two, and three. And contribution per unit is also given. Contribution per kg is also given. Company must produce 1,000 units of product one for a special contract before meeting normal demand. Unfortunately, there are only 35,000 kgs of material available. So you don't need to identify whether material is a limiting factor. It already tells you that there is a shortage of material and uh, this is contributing, this is limiting factor per unit is already given to you, limiting factor per unit. This is limiting factor per unit, okay? And then, they have already given you the contribution per unit limiting factor. From here, I can do identify the most profitable product. I can do the ranking. This is, would be ranked one, two, and then three. Okay. 
I usually follow this manner, but at times there could be some contractual obligations, right? Company must produce 1000 units of product one, irrespective of this ranking, though it is ranked three, so it is least profitable product, but still they have to provide 1000 units of product one. So my optimal production plan will slightly change a little bit. And now I will, first of all, start making product one first okay why because this was is the contractual obligation if i don't meet it definitely they'll give me some penalty or something like that though it was a least profitable product but i will produce this first so starting from and then i will follow the ranking after producing this so available kgs is only thirty five thousand. then i will produce remaining for this and this okay but first of all i need to produce thousand units so thousand units and it consumes eight kgs so straight away kgs consumed by one okay thousand units i need to produce and it takes around eight kgs so eight thousand into eight eight thousand so how many left thirty five thousand twenty seven thousand kgs are sorry yeah kgs remaining for rank king three is 27,000. Now how many demand, much demand is for 2,000 and it takes around six kgs. 2,000 into six. 2,000 into six. So 12,000 kgs will be consumed. Okay. And one, two, and three. I made thousand units of this and then I made the entire sales demand of three. And still, still I have some material left. 27,000 minus 12,000 even kgs consumed by three were 12,000. Even after that, I still have 15,000 kgs left for second in ranking. Hours remaining or to 15,000. And uh, 5,000 units I need to produce for two and it takes around five pages. So I won't be able to produce the entire of that because for that I need 25,000 pages. All I have is 15,000. So 15,000 divided by five. So how many units I'm producing Units for two is only 3,000. This in, so 15,000 divided by 5 kgs, all I'm producing is 3,000 units for two. So entire sales demand I meet, I make 1,000 units in order to meet the contractual obligation. I produced the entire sales demand for three, so it was ranked one most profitable product, and then ranked second. I was supposed to, in order to produce 5,000 units, I was supposed to have 25,000. But all I have was 15,000, and those 15,000, if one unit takes around uh, five kg, so I was only able to produce 3,000 units for two, and this is my optimal production plan. 1,000, 3,000, and 2,000. 1,000, 3,000, and 2,000, it is option B, which is the right answer. So at times when there's a contractual obligation, you don't go by the ranking thingy, okay? You meet the contractual obligation first, though it was ranked third, but I started with this first. I produced thousand units. Otherwise I would have uh, got penalized or something like that. Otherwise, if uh, nothing like that was mentioned, I would have started with this first and then second and then the third, okay? Then in that case, my optimal production plan would have been different. So the only reason why I opted started with one first because of this line here. Okay, otherwise you would have followed the ranking, the normal ranking would be. Here's another question here. We produced three products, but the number of machine hours in finishing process is only 6,000 hours, okay? And uh, you are given the selling price and video cost. 30 minus 20, 36 minus 27, 41 divided minus 35. I can quickly calculate their contribution per unit. 
this gives a contribution of 10. This is 36 minus 27. 6 minus 27. This gives a contribution of 9. And 41 minus 41 minus 35. This gives a contribution of 6. Okay. Then I, I have minutes in the finishing process per unit. But I, I need hours. Those These are minutes. So what I can do, I can convert it in an hour by dividing it with 60. One hour equals 60 minutes. So 45 minutes will be equal to how much hours I can do that. 0.75 for this. And, 20, uh, and 36 divided by 60.6 for this. Okay, and then 25 minutes, 25 minutes divided by 60, equal to how many hours? 0 0.4, 0 0.41. Four one seven, and now I need to calculate contribution per finishing hour, right? Contribution per finishing hour. All I need to do is divide contribution with our limiting factor per unit, which is going to be finishing hour per unit, right? So I have already converted it into hours. This gives a contribution of nine. This gives a contribution of 6 divided by 0 0.417 divided by 0 0.6. And now I can rank and then tell that uh, please stick to indicate the ranking, okay? I will, which would be ranked 1, 2, and 3. So I need to solve this. Contribution per unit divided by limiting factor per unit. That's what I'm doing it. Which gives more contribution per finishing hour. I will produce it first. 10 divided by 0.75. It gives 13.33, 13.33 per hour per finishing hour. Let's check the other one, 9 divided by 0 0.6, 15. So it gives more. And let's check the third one out here, 6 divided by 0 0.417, 14.3, 14.3. So ranked one, ranked one would be Y. Y would be ranked one, ranked two. This would be ranked one, this would be ranked two, and this would be ranked three since X is the least profitable. Most profitable one ranking is Y. Second ranking is Z and third ranking is X. So that's my answer. Okay. So the when the uh, already limiting factor has been identified, you don't need to do that work to identify the limiting factor. Then straight away go to calculate contribution per unit like I did here, 10, 9, and 6. And then identify the limiting factor per unit, which was already told you that finishing process say hours, finishing plant had limited machine hours, that was the limiting factor. And, but it was minutes given to you it was the hour, so I just converted the minutes into hours. 45 divided by 60, so I got here 0 0.75, 0 0.6, and 0 0.417. Then I calculated contribution per finishing hour, and then I did the bank. I identified the most profitable and least profitable. You could have asked me further about the optimal production plan, but since uh, it could ask you anything, as I told you, okay? So you need to answer up to the what they've asked for you, okay? So you don't need to tell how many units you need to produce for X, Y, and Z. Otherwise, I would have started producing the entire sales demand of Y and then Z, and then if any finishing hours were, I would have uh, produced some units of the least profitable product, which is X in this case. Okay, that's another question here. Already given the contribution per unit, the four products here, okay? Only 15,000 kgs of material and 10 to 50 labor hours are available. And then I need to, in order to maximize profit, the product that Worth would prefer to produce first is, means whether it is L, E, W, and S. So, and you're not given the material kg per unit, all you're given the rate and the total cost per unit. Yeah? 
and uh, rate per hour and the total labor cost per unit of LEWS is what is given to you. So first of all, I need to identify the kg per unit and hour per unit, okay? Like I am given the total material cost for L is 15, right? And, but I'm not given the kgs, kgs into 10 per kg. I am given the direct material cost per unit of 15. I'm not given the kgs, but I can calculate the kgs, no? If I know that the total cost is 15 and the rate is 10. So just divide this by this and you'll get the number of kgs. 15 divided by 10 and you will get the number of kgs, 1.5 kgs. So here it is 1.5, so simply divide 10 by 10, 1 kg, which requires 1 kg, 12.5 divided by 10, 12.5 divided by 10. So at times, uh, limiting factor per unit is not the straight or forward. You need to identify that first, 1.25 kgs and 20 divided by 10. Two kgs and similarly labor Hour per unit is also not given, so I can do that. 12 divided by 12. So it is one hour. L takes around one hour. 12 by 12 again, it takes one hour. 18 divided by 12. It takes how many hours? 18 divided by 12. And labor rate is 12 per hour, so it takes around 1.5 hours. 18 divided by 12. Now, 18 divided by 12, so it takes around 1.5 hours, right? Okay. Uh, now, <clears throat> I need to identify which is a limiting factor. Okay, material kgs required. Required kgs less available. Available kgs are only 15,000. So, I need to know that. Required. Okay. This takes around 1.5 kgs uh, L. So how many units do you need to produce for L into the sales demand into 3000 units plus if this consume 1 kg and how many units you need to produce for E is 2000 plus if this takes around this takes around 1.25 kgs, 1.25, and how many units you need to produce for this is 1500. So how many kgs you need to have? And the last one, if it takes around two kgs and you need to produce 2500 units for this, so you need to have 13.375 kgs altogether. 13.375 kgs altogether, but the available is more than that, so. It is excess, not a shortfall. So material is not a limiting factor. Because you have excess of 16 to 5. So because of material, you may not be producing less units than their sales demand. Now I need to check for data. Required hours. Less available. Because available is only 10 to 5. Now I need to see the required hours. Just like that, I can calculate the required hours. I have the hours and I have the sales demand into one into 3000 plus. It also takes one hour per unit and 2000 hours we need to produce for this plus one into 3000 plus one into 2000 plus. 1.5 hours, 1.5 into 1500 plus 1.5 into 2500. The total hours required are 11,000, but the available hours are less. So clearly, labor is a limiting factor. Labor is a limiting factor, material wasn't. I required 11,000 hours, but I only have 10 to 5 zero. Really, this is a shortfall of 750 hours. Okay, so this is my limiting factor per unit. 1, 1, 1.5, 1.5.
Now, in order to maximize profit, the product that worth would prefer to produce first is product which L E W S. I need to take the decision based upon contribution per hour, right? So I have their contribution per unit. So I have their contribution per unit. And I have their limiting factor per unit. 10 divided by 1, 15 divided by 1, 12 divided by 1.5, and then 20 divided by 1.5 again. Now I get my answer and come to know which is the most popular part. Here it gives a contribution of 10 per hour. And it gives a contribution of 15 per hour. 12 divided by 1.5. 12 divided by 1.5. Yes, it only gives a contribution of 8 per hour. So it is not that popular. 20 divided by 1.5, it gives a contribution of 13.3, 13.3 per meter hour. So now, which is the most profitable product out of all? It only asked you the most profitable product, which is product E. So this would be ranked one, second, third, the least profitable product is that gives you the minimum contribution per unit of limiting factor, which is per meter hour in this case. Got my answer here. I hope you understood. It is a very interesting topic and uh, it uh, gives you easy marks if you understand the concept. And these are not difficult concepts, very easy to pick. All you need to do is a bit of the practice, right? Sometimes creative forward things are given to you. Sometimes you need to find out things just like I, first of all, found, found out the kg per unit and labor hour per unit wasn't straight away given to me like it was in the other questions. And at times, you don't need to follow the ranking because of some contractual obligations, just like we did one question. So otherwise, you've got easy marks for, you for all the decision-making area. It's not those, it's not very difficult to understand. And it's very interesting. If you solve the question logically with a logical mind, and with the questioning, okay?